I test two statistics. This is chapter four and chapter five, correlation and probability. Let's do it. Here we have a bivariate quantitative data. It says determine if there's a significant linear correlation between time between eruptions and length of eruptions. So we can grab the data, copy it, and then go over to StackCrunch, paste it in. Now I called this X and Y. How do I know what is X and what is Y? Well, part C is interesting. It says, what eruption length would you predict? So whatever you're trying to predict, that's the Y. So length of eruptions, that's going to be Y. In this case, they kind of have a Y and an X here. So, but in case they didn't have that, just keep that in mind. Now, what are we trying to do again? We are trying to determine if there's a significant linear correlation. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, let's do this again. I'm going to press stat. And I'm going to go to regression, simple linear, and I'm going to, the X, I'll put X, Y, and then just press compute. And there's my R right here. So I kind of like having this regression equation, the sample size and R. So I'm going to copy these, go back to the test and then paste it in. For part A, I pasted it in right there. Now to answer A, de determine if there's a significant linear correlation. You know, we kind of, maybe we should actually throw in the graph too, just just for good measure, let's throw in the graph also. I have to first go insert image, upload image. I get that ready. And then I now I can go over here and now I can go drag it and then drop. Maybe make it smaller too, cause it's a little big. The bulk of my work here, the main job that I have to do is to compare R with the with the critical values. So let's, let's do that. That's, that's our real work. Critical values. They are in the announcements. If you go to announcement and then you look for chapter four formulas, because this is chapter four, <clears throat> we have these critical values here. The sample size is nine. So for a sample size of nine, I have 0.666 for my critical value. So then I go over here and now this value 0.910 is bigger than 0.66. So watch how I write this. I say R which equals to 0.911 is greater than 0 0.666 which is the c dot b critical value therefore there is is a linear relation or correlation part b compute the 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 equation of the least squares regression line so i guess we could just copy this right control c if i ask for something in part b label part b and then put the answer there so then part C, what eruption length would you predict? Since there's a strong correlation here, since there is a linear relation, we can use the regression equation to make our prediction. So watch how we make the prediction. One thing you can do is you can just plug into X. You can plug in 11.7 if you want. Another thing we can do, easy way. Okay, remember, what do we? What would you predict after an 11.7 minute time between eruptions? So watch this, this is very cool with stack crunch options edit so for prediction of why i'm going to put 11.7 compute and there is my answer let me do a screenshot new so that's my prediction right there so for part c can i control v i guess i can paste that in with control v nice it lets me do that it's super nice i didn't know you can press control v to paste into canvas i think that might be a new feature all right so d was the actual oh good question was the actual eruption length longer than normal Ooh. so we're predicting 1.79 for the 11.7 that's our prediction but if we look at the actual data we see 1.82 okay so let's see how we answer part d actual equals so I'm gonna put 1.82 predicted, 1.79. Okay, now what, what's the question again? Was the actual erupt eruption length longer than normal? Was the actual longer than normal? Yes, it's bigger. So we could say, yes, 1.82 is bigger than 1.79. Number two, cat litter exposure of people as kids and their eventual income is listed below is the person with 90 12 and an influential point this should be n not ant i will be looking for two comparisons critical value and the correlation coefficient and a conclusion okay oh man this is okay a lot of work here let's do this so copy go to stack crunch new data table 
Uh, what was, we should probably write down what X and Y, so cat, exposure, and then income, we could, we could put that in. Maybe exposure, income. So exposure is the X, and the income is the Y. Okay, so we have a 90 and a 12 here, oh my goodness, wow. Is the person with 90-12 an influential point? This person, is that person an influential point? Hmm. So what we want to do here is we want to do the correlation with and without them and see if there's a big difference. So I'm going to say stat, regression, simple, linear. X is exposure, Y is income. Press compute and take a look at what we have. We have everything here. So I'm going to say copy. So I'm going to say this is uh, with 90-12. Maybe we should get the graph too, actually. Remember, we go over here, we say insert image, get that ready, come here, press options, copy, grab this, pull it over, and then drop it, press submit. I kind of want to do some extra credit stuff real quick for people who love extra credit. I'm going to do <laughs> insert table two, grab this thing throw it in here grab all of this throw it in here so wait what, what happened to my graph where'd he go where'd my graph go control z control z control z control z okay graph where'd you go there's the graph okay control x control v there we go so watch this well look at that point down here first of all you see that point there is this point way down here that kind of looks like an influential point since it's kind of off of the trend so it looks influential right now, but I need to prove that it's influ influential mathematically. So watch what I do. I say the following without the point, we have, well, first of all, we have a sample size of 12. So I want to grab 12, I have 0.576. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say R equals 0 0.49, which is less than 0. 5.76, okay, so the R value is less than 0.576, so there isn't a correlation. With the point 9012, mathematically, stack crunch wise, there's no correlation because the correlation is 0.49, which is less than 0.576. In order for there to be a correlation, R would need to be bigger than 0.576. All right, now, but this looks, this looks like a correlation. This is the problem. This data looks correlated. But this little point down here looks like an influential point, so it's decreasing the correlation. It's making it only 0.49, so that's a big problem. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take it out. So watch this. Let's do table, and we'll go like this, watch. We'll say without 90-12. So I'm gonna take that point out, and then I'm gonna redo everything, so watch this. So I'm gonna close some stuff. I'm gonna get rid of 90-12, delete, delete. And I'll do stats, regression, simple linear, exposure. And let's see what happens. Look at the R, ooh, my goodness. Look at the R value now. It was definitely an influential point. So watch, I'm going to take this, control C, over here, press enter, or shift enter. Control V, paste that in. I will even go here and say, see if this works, insert image, and I will try to paste this there. So I'll, I'll grab the picture too, options, copy, drag it, paste. Let's see if it pastes in my table. How good am I? Oh, it pasted in the table, look at that. All right, so, so now I'm gonna do another write up. I'm gonna say with, Actually, this, this was with the point, my bad. This is with the point. We have that, so there isn't a correlation. And then I'll say with without the point. So now there is a linear relation. Conclusion, 90-12 is a, an influential with the point and without the point. There is a correlation. Question number three, the table lists the drinking habits of a group of college students. If a student is chosen at random, find the probability of getting someone who is a woman or a non-drinker. 
So, we, this is a two-way table. So, woman. Okay, there's 402 people. See this 402 right here? Great. We need to find the probability that someone's a woman or a non-drinker. So, this is the addition rule, the or. So, woman, non-drinker, woman, non-drink, woman or non-drinker. So, first of all, there's 215 women and there's 322 non-drinkers. However, there's that 187 is counted twice. So, we got to be careful. The way that I like to do this is I'll... So, I basically need to add up all these. This number, 135 plus this 187 plus this 21 plus this 7. If I add those four numbers and then divide by 402 I'm good so what I like to do is I just add 215 because that's the sum of the, these three numbers and then I add that 135 so 215 plus 135 divided by 402 go to Desmos fraction 215 plus 1 215 plus 135 divided by 402 I believe it was so there you go there's the answer 0.871 if you round to the thousandths place 0.871 three decimals so 0.871 that's your answer now since this is a small box it's just a numerical answer question so you leave it like that question number four construct a two-way table number one and then event e is being a senior event f is playing baseball find the following probability of e or f okay let's grab all this data we have a bunch of people that are freshmen sophomore junior etc they're playing football basketball baseball etc so i'm gonna go to stack crunch i could get a new data table stack crunch new data table i'm gonna paste Control V to get a two way table. I do stat. How do I do this? Stat table contingency with data, row variable, variable one. Yeah, I can do it like that. And then press compute. And there you go. Baseball, basketball, football, and sport. Why does it say sport? Don't like this here. Okay. This is a problem. It says baseball, basketball, football, and then sports. It also says year here. That means you pasted it wrong, you see? So you, you gotta fix that. So we're gonna fix it. So we'll press Control Z and then click here and then press Control V. And now it has year and sport on the top. A lot of people make that mistake. So I'm glad I made that mistake. So you guys could fix that. So now I'm gonna do stat, summary stat table, and then contingency with data. So year and then sport now when i press compute it's a little bit smaller we just have baseball basketball football and then freshman junior senior and sophomore that's what i want for number one we have a picture here but we can ignore that we're just going to take a screenshot here well first of all let me go over here and do this insert i should maybe say one or there's two questions here so then i'll say insert image get that ready now come over here, new, and then do this. Come over here, actually. Oh wait, I think I can paste, can I? Control V without, yeah, you can press Control V. I think that's an upgrade on Canvas because I don't remember you being able to do that. All right, there is the answer for number one. Don't make it too small, make sure I can read it. Okay, so two. So for two, let's see what's happening. For two, we have to do this. Um, event E is a so probability of E or F. So senior or baseball. Got it. Senior or baseball. So probability of senior or baseball. I can rewrite it like this. Instead of E or F, I can write it like that. Because E is senior and F is baseball. Let's see. Senior or baseball. So nine people are seniors. 14 people are baseball, play baseball, but five people were counted twice so we got to be very careful what i could do is i could add 14 plus these four extra se uh, seniors that play basketball and football because 14 people play baseball and then i could add the one and the one senior that plays basketball and then the three seniors that play football so 14 plus one plus three right so let me go to desmos um actually i like if you do something like this would be amazing if you did like i f i forgot that like on this question i probably should have done something like this just put a one here and then copied this like this control c for that last question kind of, oh never mind that was that was a numerical question but on this one uh 14 plus 1 plus 3 right so watch how i could do this get rid of this 14 plus 1 plus 3 see i want to i kind of want to show i want you guys to show your work on how you got your answers so 14 plus one plus three Let's see what's in the denominator 30 right senior or baseball so 14 baseball plus one plus three for the numerator those are the people that, that are seniors or play baseball divided by 30 because there's 30 total people so where are we desmos let's put a 30 here now watch this i'm gonna do something like this you can do this if you want oops control z i'm gonna copy this control c 
and then control V and then I'm gonna copy all this control C now when I go over here and I paste that it may not look good see that looks weird so what I'm gonna do instead I'm gonna press insert equation and then I'm gonna paste it here like that and I'm gonna get that now that looks a lot better right that's nice okay so it looks like we're done with this question 0. 0.6 is the answer that's the probability number five you are trying to predict the income of people based off of their gpa you have a data set with 10 people in it the correlation coefficient is 0. 0.605 what would you use to make the prediction of a student with a 4.0 gpa so we're trying their income we're trying to predict their income the correlation coefficient is 0. 0.605 we have two options either use the average of the incomes or use the regression equation so we have the correlation coefficient now we also have 10 people so we could go to this the correlate the the critical values for the correlation coefficient so go to 10 it's 0.632 so the correlation coefficient needs to be bigger than 0.632 so let's see oh it's smaller than 0.632 therefore we use y bar see that that's how you answer that question number five all right number six true or false the correlation is in graph a is bigger that's true graph a this one these dots are closer together closer to a line the bottom one seems more scattered out right the correlation in graph a is bigger that looks true there are 12 hispanic students out of 30 in the class the teacher randomly picks one student the probability that his a hispanic student is selected is 12 over 30 what type of probability is this? So there are 12 Hispanic students out of 30 in the class. The teacher randomly picks one student. That would be a classical probability because we we are counting just the number of people in class. There's 30 total people in class and then 12 of them are Hispanic. So we're just dividing. Now, if this was the two options that, I, that are gonna be are classical or empirical, all right, just these two. I don't really mess around with subjective much. So classical means you're just counting, for instance, flipping a coin. Probability of getting heads is one over two because you can get one head out of two. Uh, flip, rolling a die, trying to get a five. Well, you can get, there's one five out of six. So these are all classical. Pick, let's say 10 students randomly and I count how many of them were Hispanic. That's empirical. All right, that's the difference between classical and empirical. Now, when you study for the test, make sure you look at the notes and the homework. Don't just rely on this. This is just one version of the test there's multiple versions that's the plug